My major research love in life, I guess, are the stomatopods, these remarkable crustaceans. They're shrimps which have the most complex colour vision of any animal on Earth. And this was my PhD subject with Mike Land back at the University of Sussex. Way back then we discovered that these animals have 12 photoreceptors for colour vision. We only have three. We have three cells within our eyes, the red, green and blue colour receptors. Stomatopods have four times that many, so it's a really interesting question to ask, you know, why? What are they doing with all that colour information? The human colour vision system um, has three colour sensitivities and we are able to see the range of colours that we see because we compare um, excitations in our different photoreceptors to each other. So our colour vision system works um, based on comparisons, which allows us to see a whole range of different colours. The somatopod colour vision system works differently to this because it, it probably doesn't um, compare its different colour receptors. It uh, more works as a, a parallel processing system compared to our opponent processing system. As well as colour vision, we've learnt with stomatopod research that these animals also have polarisation vision. Now humans can relate to that when we put on polarising sunglasses to remove the glare from the road or to remove the glare from the surface of the ocean. It turns out that many animals, including stomatopods and other crustaceans, also including the cephalopods, the octopus, squid and cuttlefish, have essentially polarising filters within their eyes, built within the structure. So they appear to be very interested in this uh, channel of information. What I'm trying to answer is the question of what are the somatopods and mantis shrimp are using their circularly polarized uh, vision for? It's a very unique ability that we, as much as we know, exists only in these somatopods. And we don't really know why do they need to see circularly polarized light. We know that these animals reflect circularly polarized light. We know that they can see circular parasite. What we don't know is if they have any behavior or preference that is totally natural that has to do with circular parasite. So what I wanted to show is, or to find, is a single behavior, something that they are uh, going to do completely naturally that depends only on circular parasite. So what I did here uh, was after many iterations is work on a, on a setup where we have really two burrows where one is showing unpluralocyte and the other one shows circular pluralocyte and there's absolutely no other difference between these two burrows other than this polarization. Now depending on the orientation of these filters I can control whether the light is unpolarized or circularly polarized. Um, and I always make sure that one is on polarized and the other is circularly polarized and then I switch them and, and have it randomly uh, arranged like that. I can put them in the arena and have a little video camera and, and see what they choose. The, the shrimps had a significant preference to the unpolarized burrow. They avoided the circularly polarized burrow. And the story that we can see behind this is because they're so aggressive, it makes sense to avoid occupying or trying to occupy a burrow that already has an animal in it. This is um, a peacock mantis shrimp, uh, the poster child for all mantis shrimp. Um, we collected him from Stradbroke Island um, just a couple of weeks ago. He was in between two rocks and we managed to put the net at one end and scoot it through and it shot into the net and we brought it back up. Yeah, I know. I've literally never seen that before. Haven't you? Yeah, and no, I Like on the, on the yeah. front and everything. Like gooseneck barnacles. Um, and I'm going to feed him today. These guys are predators. They would just go looking around for prey and then they'd use their raptorial appendages to strike that prey, um, immobilize it and then eat it. Justin Marshall is, is a really, really nice supervisor. He just uh, takes good care of his students and uh, is a, is a very, creates this very positive environment. Plus, you get to go to Lizard Island. We work together a lot and we always are discussing our ideas and we have really good collaborations with even people um, overseas. So we meet up with them in the field and talk about our research and our ideas. So we have a pretty good community, I think.